Well, I guess my clickbait title worked really well and here you are, looking for the perfect mountain bike strength and conditioning program. And I hate to break it to you, but there is no perfect one size fits all training plan. And yeah, I'll say it again, there is not one single perfect pre-programmed training plan. Now, that's not to say that the plans you find online aren't good, in fact most of them are absolutely fantastic. They are great for building overall fitness and improving your writing in a broad sense, and some pre-built programs are designed to tackle some common weaknesses found in most mountain bikers. So with that in mind, a well-designed pre-program plan will likely be beneficial for you, but it won't be perfect or individualized. So what is the perfect mountain bike strength and conditioning plan then? Well, that all comes down to you, because the perfect plan is all built for you. The perfect plan accounts for your schedule, your equipment availability, defines your goals, assesses your strengths, and addresses your weaknesses. The perfect plan has many components built in to address your total body function and awareness such as strength training, aerobic conditioning, trunk control and stability, explosive power production, neuromuscular control, balance, spatial awareness, mobility, recovery, and in the case of mountain biking, on the bike skills and conditioning. A well-built plan also accounts for different parts of the riding season, such as off-season, pre-season, and intra-season training. Uh, so there are different phases of a full training program where rep and weight schemas, exercise selection, target heart rate zones, and duration, and even more parameters will change to match the uh, timeline of the riding season. So all in all, the perfect mountain bike training program accounts for a lot of things to help you reach goals and to improve your experience on the bike. So let's put this all together. Let's just put together a single training day for two riders with completely different strengths, weaknesses, and goals. So let's say we have a rider. Call them Rider A. In Rider A, they are impressively strong with bilateral strength exercises like squat and deadlift. But when I ask them to do a unilateral exercise like a lunge or a single leg squat, they show poor coordination and balance, which is limiting their strength. This difference in strength between the bilateral and unilateral exercises is referred to as a unilateral deficit. So on top of this deficit, Rider A is also lacking in aerobic and muscular endurance. So this rider's goals are to reduce that unilateral deficit, improve balance and coordination, and improve aerobic and muscular endurance so they can tolerate longer climbs leading to longer downhills. While another rider, Rider B, is an endurance machine but has poor explosive power production, which they feel is affecting their technical climbing abilities. Their goal is to maintain their aerobic capacity while improving their explosive power production so they can improve their steep technical climbing abilities. So to keep this simple and not go on talking for hours and hours, I'm just going to concentrate on four resistance training exercises per rider in a transitional phase between the off-season and pre-season. So the base fitness is already built and the plan is going to more directly address the rider's goals. So let's start off with rider A here and we'll have him do something like single leg squat to bench, single legged Romanian deadlift, a barbell back squat, and kettlebell swings. And on that single legged squat to bench, so they're going to be standing, single leg squat down, touch the bench back up. We're going to do four sets of six to eight reps, and there'll be a certain cadence to that, which will be three count on the way down, one count on the way back up. And this count is just to improve the eccentric control of the movement and also improve neuromuscular control and the coordination and balance. And there's going to be 60 seconds of rest between sets. And then when we move to the single-legged Romanian deadlifts, we're going to do four sets of 8 to 10 reps per side. And the additional reps are going to just help to address that coordination. And again, same thing, three count down, one count up, and rest 60 seconds between. And then during the lift, we're going to, instead of having a dumbbell in each hand, we're going to use a dumbbell load in the contralateral hand, meaning whichever leg is up, the opposite arm is going to be carrying the weight. And that's going to add a rotational aspect to it and it is just gonna help, again, further improve that coordination. With squats, we're gonna do four sets, 12 to 15 reps, with 30 seconds rest in between, and that's going to address the muscular endurance and help to improve recovery time between sets. And then, lastly, kettlebell swings, four sets of 30 seconds worth of swings, just to improve that muscular and aerobic endurance and address coordination, 20 seconds of rest between sets. 
So for Rider B, the program's gonna look quite a bit different. And we're gonna do something, let's say jump squats, push press, single-legged kettlebell cleans, and single-legged power jumps. And on those jump squats, we're gonna do three sets of 12 reps with 30 seconds of rest between sets. And that is gonna be there to improve that explosive power and maintain endurance and recovery. Push press, we're gonna do, again, three sets, 12 reps with 30 seconds rest. And if the same goals in mind, you improve the explosive power and maintain endurance. And then the single arm kettlebell clean, we're gonna do three sets of eight to 10 reps per side with 60 seconds rest. And this is gonna be for that full body power and to help with coordination due to the complexity of the kettlebell clean. Then with the single legged power jump, we're gonna do three sets of 10 reps per side with 60 seconds rest again. And it's all for that same goal of the lower extremity explosive power production just to help with the climbing capabilities of this rider. And it would be good for both these riders just to add in some sort of full body rotational exercise. But again, this is just a really quick example of how plans can look different. So as you can see, even though these two riders are both mountain bikers, their plans are wildly different just based off of their goals, their strengths, and their weaknesses. And this is just a quick snippet of a training program. And there are many, many, many ways to design a plan to help these riders out. And with that in mind, you can see how it's easy to get lost in the weeds when designing a program. A program can be created to account for every facet of the rider's needs, but in doing so can quickly become unrealistically long, whether that's in sessions or in overall program design. And this brings me to another aspect of the perfect training plan, and that is efficiency. The program needs to be efficient to encourage adherence and consistency. And the best step towards making improvements and adaptations and the ever so important gains is to be consistent. I mean, you can have the best plan, you can have the perfect plan written out, but if you don't actually execute it, you won't get the results you need or are looking for. And also the training plan should enhance your primary sport, not interfere with it. So in the case of mountain biking, doing endless amounts of squats to failure during in-season isn't gonna do anything for you, but leave you fatigued on the trail. So now that you have an understanding of how much goes into designing an appropriate training plan to benefit your performance, it's easy to become overwhelmed with it all which is an excellent segue into the next segment of this video, which is the importance of utilizing a trainer or a coach. So a trainer or a performance coach, they take the guesswork out of training. So all you have to do is show up and put in the work and they're adaptable. So even if they're not an expert in a particular sport, like for us mountain biking, they can do research and they can network and they can find ways to ensure you're receiving proper programming. They'll often perform a needs analysis based off of your sport so they can integrate everything and individualize everything to your specific goals. And trainers and strength coaches, they can assess your movement capabilities. They can critique and correct your form and identify your strengths and weaknesses and aid in developing goals and just develop a program with phases and periodizations that caters to your schedule and what equipment you have access to. Trainers can modulate plans and reassess needs and evaluate progress towards goals and change goals as needed. And a great trainer is there to collaborate with you and come up with the most realistic and efficient program that will fit into your life. Coaches and trainers are also excellent at motivation and accountability. A good trainer has a way of getting you stoked to work on yourself and will make sure you're doing just that. They will keep you accountable with regular check-ins, either through like online forums or emails, phone calls, Zoom calls, or even in-person meetings. And these check-ins, they could ask about how the program is going, if you're experiencing any barriers, or if you're having any elevated stress, and so on and so forth. There's also an expectation that you will communicate with your trainer regarding your program and what is or what isn't working. And this helps them to keep you moving towards your goals. Now, I just wanna clarify a point here. I'm not saying that you need to have a trainer to be successful, not at all. In fact, a lot of people find a lot of success on their own. A trainer is just a really helpful tool just to help you along that process of developing and reaching goals. All right, you get it. A trainer or a performance coach is a super radical resource to have in your back pocket. But where do you start finding a good trainer? I mean, let's be honest, there are a ton of really good trainers out there. And you just need to do your research like you would do with any mountain bike product. 
I will help you out a bit here though. And no, I'm not gonna be promoting myself because currently I'm not taking any clients. In the future when I am, I'll add that into the description below and into the comment section. I will however suggest a few trainers I know and I follow and I really enjoy their content and their philosophy and their attitude towards fitness and strength and conditioning. And I'm even including a trainer who specializes in program design for mountain bikers. So let's start this off with two of my classmates and colleagues, Chris Lee and Crystal Corette. So Chris and Crystal are stupidly smart. Wait, that doesn't make sense. They're intelligently smart. No, that's stupid too. They're incredibly smart. Yeah, there we go. That's the one. And they are doctor of physical therapy students just like me with a background in coaching and strength and conditioning programming and competing in strength sports, you know, Olympic lifting and powerlifting, which explains their quadzillas over there. And they have a really cool service. And guess what? You're going to be some of the first to hear about it. So they are offering mobility coaching services starting March 1st. And their goal is to give you personalized form analysis, prehab, mobility work, and whatever else you need. And they offer a few different services, ranging from a simple one-time video analysis to a full monthly subscription. And they're working with a small startup company called Evolutionary Performance Systems, which also offers training and nutritional services and coaching. And if nothing else, give them a follow on Instagram for some free evidence-based and science-backed information, and you might just learn a thing or two. Also, check out EPS Strength on, and check out their website for more information on their services, and their links are below in the description. So the next trainer I'd like to talk about is Justin Wright with Justin Wright Fitness. And he offers something really cool for just general fitness seekers. And he also works with athletes who are looking for more individualized specific programming. For overall fitness, Justin offers a monthly subscription fitness and nutrition program that includes four weeks of workouts for home or gym setups. And he includes all the sets and all the reps and all the times with video explanation and detailed instructions of workouts. And he even gives you 10 nutrient dense recipes. All of this comes in at an easy on the wallet price of just 10 bucks a month. I mean, Jesus, just 10 bucks a month. That's insane. And so every month you're getting you know, new workouts and new recipes to keep your fitness journey refreshing and to steer away from any sort of dreaded plateau. And Justin also offers personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching for those looking to, to directly work on their goals. On top of that, Justin is just a hell of a nice dude and he's incredibly down to earth. And he's great at motivating his clients. So check him out at his website and on Instagram. Links are in the description below. Lastly, but not leastly. Leastly? Really, man? Come on. Lastly, but not least, we have Chris Linder with Alpine Mountain Bike Training Programs. Now, Chris is up in Canada where the mountain bikers are always shredding. And he's up there just helping to keep them on the trails. He's an athletic therapist with over 15 years of experience working with athletes ranging from you know the amateur athlete like myself to professional hockey players. As a mountain biker himself, he's been through the ringer when it comes to working on himself and maximizing his body's natural movements and his fitness to optimize his performance on the trail. And now he's offering all of his knowledge and his experience and his skills to help other mountain bikers build their fitness and meet their goals through focused functional programs. His philosophy is to help you improve your overall well-being and develop a healthy lifestyle and improve your mountain biking performance through strength and endurance and mobility exercises that are catered to your mountain biking needs. And in the future, he's even looking to include on-the-bike skills as a component of the training program. I mean, how sick is that? And, you know, talking with Chris, he has been a pleasure. He knows what he's talking about. He provides a lot of good motivating caveats when it comes to fitness. And check him out on Instagram and on his website. Links are down below in the description. So there you go. I hope you learned something from this video and have a better understanding of what it takes to develop the perfect mountain bike strength and conditioning program. And you understand the importance of having a trainer or a coach. It's a lot more than just that three sets of 10 of blah, blah, blah exercise and then go ride your bike for 30 minutes afterwards. It can take a lot of brain power to develop the plan and it can be easy to overcomplicate or underproduce a killer plan. 
That's once again where having a trainer comes in clutch with program design, implementation, modulation, accountability, and motivation. And well, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video and cycling related fitness content or just mountain bike content in general, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll be putting out more strength and conditioning videos, how to's, tech tips, and riding videos here in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And I never really know how to end these things. So I am just gonna end it with a sick excerpt from one of my band's songs. So enjoy.